Good morning, everybody. We're at Senex in Deer River, Minnesota. Just grabbed myself a coffee, washed my face, got ready for the day. We gotta hit the road. We have this load behind us that we picked up yesterday afternoon. We gotta deliver it into Brainerd as soon as we can and then see what the plan is from there. There, There is no plan right now to tell you. So you'll find out when I find out. Let's get going. Get out of town. It's gonna be a good day. It's not too cold. Three degrees Celsius, so probably like 36 Fahrenheit, something like that, 38. my mirror right there through my dirty window we have an empty trailer just in case you don't believe me when I say I got unloaded so we dropped off this freight it was really quick they helped me roll up my tarp so I was in and out in half an hour tarps rolled up oh down the road our next load is in Duluth Minnesota right at the Wisconsin border Duluth has got some freight for me I'm gonna have to pick it up first thing in the morning I think I'm gonna try to get there today yet but I'm pretty sure they go home at 2.30, and I'm going to get there at 3.30. So I'm going to make some phone calls, and we're going to get on the road. Most likely get loaded tomorrow morning, and then head back to Winnipeg. Oh, and we feel light as a feather again. That's nice. So I believe we're picking up some manufactured steel. 
It's gonna be a heavy load. Easy to tie down though. And then that is most likely going back to Winnipeg. I have to check the paperwork yet. I just I just looked at the address of where I'm picking up. <laughs> But I've picked up there many times before. That's why I didn't even look. It's, it's going back to Winnipeg or it's going out west and I bring it back to our yard and someone takes it from there. Well, we'll see what happens. If it's not, that's fine too. But if I go back to Winnipeg, I can get these extra tarps and all of this equipment in here off my truck and out of my cab here. I'm going for it. Heads up there, bud. Thank you. So we've got to go up through this road now in town. Usually I would take the 28, which goes around town. Or the 25, whatever, 28th Street, but it's Highway 25, I don't know. Usually there's a perimeter that goes around Brainerd, right? But they have it closed off right now. I guess they're doing repairs on it or improving it or something. So through town we go. On our way to Duluth. This looks like it would be a nice town to live in. Reminds me a lot of Steinbeck back home. A little bit bigger though. sound when the fuel hits the bottom of the tanks. Full of juice, ready to go. Today we bought 142 US gallons, 537 liters. Cost about 604 US dollars or 840 Canadian dollars. price for us today was $4.29 US per gallon or $1.56 Canadian per liter. In 100 meters, turn left on Washington Street, NM210. Average six miles per gallon or about 38.8 or 0.9 liters per 100 kilometers. Not too bad, sitting right in the average zone. You expect that to dip in the winter time very often because for one, your truck runs a little longer. You gotta stay warm. I don't have to run mine overnight. Continue on this road for 22 kilometers. go straight to go up 
to Kenora here. This is Crosby, Minnesota. We were here yesterday. Today we're going to turn right to go east. Make our way to Duluth. Continue on this road for six kilometers. Straight up the driveway. Got a neighbor here, got a neighbor there. If any of them leave in the middle of the night, it'll be very easy for someone else to come in and back in right beside me. So I don't gotta worry about getting hit or getting my truck damaged. I was actually gonna go down the street to another truck stop just down the road. They only had three spots there and there was one available. It was a little bit closer to where I need to be tomorrow morning, but it was a blind side back and it was very tight. Chances are, that, you know, I'd be the last one parked there, but if one of those other guys left and someone else came in and maybe he's a new driver, maybe it's a tired guy, maybe it's a guy who has no idea what he's doing, maybe it's an honest mistake, maybe he shouldn't be driving a truck, I don't know, but it would be back into me. High chance that I get backed into there. Too high of a chance for me anyways. If, if there's any chance and I have a better place to park, because I was here before and I saw this spot was available. It's like, oh, let's see if I can get a little bit closer for tomorrow morning. It's like five minutes closer, it's like negligible. It doesn't make a difference. So I went there, I was like, nope, nuh-uh, not risking it. Came back here, I got this spot. The reason I didn't want to really park here is because the guy on the other side of this guy, there's a guy over there with a Kenworth T680, something must be wrong with his turbo. I can't hear it now because this truck is blocking the sound right now because he backed in here, but before he wasn't there. And one spot over, there's a Kenworth T680 and he was idling it. It wasn't a regen, but it was on high idle and his turbo was just like just piercing. I can hear it with all my windows closed. I'm like, how am I going to sleep with that? I'm going to put my earplugs in. Just piercing, just nonstop. And I know that that's probably the kind of guy who's gonna idle his truck through the entire night, even though the temperature is perfect to sleep with your truck park uh, and off, like perfect temperature. But you're gonna idle it through the whole night anyway. So I didn't wanna have that sound. So that's why I went down the road to check out that other truck stop. And I was like, yeah, there's one spot left. And then I took a closer look at it. I'm like, ah, no, no, old blue, I'm not gonna risk it. Don't worry, don't worry, you know. Everybody's like, well, you have insurance, right? Well, yeah, but not on my time and my lost time. Sure, yeah, I got cameras all over the place. I'll catch the guy, we'll chase after him and sue him for all my repairs. I could try to go after him for some lost time too. 
But that takes time. That takes money for the lawyers too if I wanna sue them for my lost time. And, and insurance, it takes time. In the meantime, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna to have to go and beg for a truck to drive. Uh, and who knows how long we'd be waiting for parts. It could be months. And then old blue is down and I'm driving a different truck making much less money because now I gotta rent a truck, right? And it's all because I wanted to be five minutes closer to the shipper. Nope. Nope. Oh, hey, that guy's leaving. Nice. Oh, you see, we made the right choice. Bye-bye, Mr. Whistle Turbo. Take your whistling turbo somewhere else. Okay, well, just as I was talking to you, see, it's going to be a good day. And someone else is coming to park in his spot already. It's another T680. He probably won't have that turbo issue because that's not a common thing. I've heard it before. Sometimes the turbo just catches the exhaust just right and it starts whistling on you and uh, you got to adjust your idle just a little bit to get the turbo to spool down a little bit more and stop screaming at everybody around you. Some guys don't know that. Some guys don't care. Some guys don't notice it. I notice it. <laughs> but I'm very picky where about where I park, like excessively picky, like to the point where I probably got a problem, but I'm not going to go talk to anybody, anybody about it because I'm okay with it. I always say when I get to a truck stop at the end of my day where I'm going to park for the night, I'm like a dog. I'll go and circle the parking lot at least twice, maybe three times before I find a place to park and sleep. I want the best spot and I want the spot with the least amount of risk. Sometimes you have to have to accept a spot that has some risk or a lot of risk in those tight parking lots, those, those tight truck stops. Sometimes there's no other choice, but if there is a choice, I'm going to find it and I'm going to take it. So I circled a lot, unless if there's like a ton of trucks, like moving around, looking for spots, the first empty one I find mine, you get it, you get it. But yeah, it is what it is, right? I, I just want to make sure that my truck doesn't get damaged because I need it. I, I need it. <laughs> I need it to work. Uh, and I take special care of it to make sure it works and that it'll last a long time yet. It's an old girl already, it's an old truck. And believe me, I'm gonna be driving it for as long as I'm able to. I'd say till the wheels fall off, but I'm gonna maintain it and make sure that the wheels never do fall off, don't worry. That's the thing, you have to maintain it and you have to be careful. Careful about where you park, careful about who you let fix it and repair it. I've got a great shop. Now, where I go to, I take my truck to PBX and Blumenort. They have been stellar. They've been amazing for me. Uh, that's that's where I get my work done on my truck. I trust them. They've been working on this truck for much longer than I've owned the truck. The owner before me took his truck there. Uh, and I believe the owner before that did as well. So if I'm not wrong, uh, I'm willing to be corrected. But from what I understand, this truck has been serviced at the same shop since it rolled off the lot brand new. So all of the records of this truck, the, the guys there, they know this truck. They know me now. They knew the owner before me. When this truck rolls into the shop, they know the truck. So uh, that, that, that's important to me too. They're the only ones I want to touch my truck. I don't, I don't let anyone else touch my truck unless it's like an emergency or something. But uh, be very careful who you let fix it, who you let touch it, where you park it, and how you drive it. If you take care of it like that and you're careful, oh, it'll last a long time. This thing's a 2008. It's got over 3 million kilometers on it already. It's got like 1.8 million miles. I might double that yet. We'll see. We'll see. The engine has 800,000 kilometers on it or 500,000 miles. I'll get another couple of years out of it before I got to rebuild it again. Maybe several years. Who knows? Like I said, it all depends on how you take care of it and how you drive it, how you treat it. Enough of that though, it's time for me to go to bed here. I'm actually gonna go inside the building and grab a shower. Uh, I heard they're just $8. That's according to reviews on the apps that I've uh, researched. So I'll grab my shower stuff here and uh, I need to give myself a haircut yet too. This is like wild and out of control. Like I'm gonna, people are gonna start thinking I'm in like a heavy metal rock band and well, with headbangers, you know? Turning into an 80s hairband guy here. Look how long this is. Time to take care of myself a little bit, right? It's been a busy couple of weeks. Take care, everybody. Please drive safe on the roads out there. When you're behind the wheel, keep your head up. Keep your eyes on the road. Keep your stick on the ice. Please drive safe. We all want to get home to our family.